Hello and good day, MMA fans. That's right, the punching bag is back with another exciting episode for you. So let me ask you folks, who wants their fill of MMA? I do, so let's not waste any more time and get right to it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, I ask of you to prepare for a takeoff. It's MMA Sucker Punch time! So for this special first edition of Sucker Punch, I'm going to re-familiarize you knobs out there in TV land with the humble beginnings of a brand and company that helped mixed martial arts break into the mainstream. But first, let's take a look at a filmmaker who deserves even more acclaim than he's already received, Mr. Bobby Razik. So does anybody know who I'm talking about? Unless you're a diehard MMA fan, you might not be too in touch with this talented individual. Bobby Razik is an ambassador for the sport, and you kids better start to recognize, and recognize fast. Away we go! In most things we do, the biggest battle comes from within. <laughs> we started with nothing, put like a couple grand, and just ran with it. Nobody believed in, especially the face paint. Mixed martial arts was basically nothing. That was in the mid-90s. Mixed martial arts and fighting didn't have any identity. We were just out there, us against the world. We motivate the world, people, fighters, the sport. It's not all just putting on a t-shirt. Born in Tottenham, England, Bobby was fascinated by the stories of people close to him from a young age, not to mention his affinity for cinematography. Like most in the industry, his dream was to become a filmmaker and move to Los Angeles. So as years passed, he finally made the move and success followed. Razik's career in the film world now consists of commercials for global brands such as Tap Out, Dethrone, Bad Boy Apparel, Wearhead, Metro PCS, and Hayabusa. His commercials air on Fox Sports, Fuse, and Spike TV, with over 100 plus commercials to his credit, alongside 12 films. Okay, knobs, how about the history of MMA? Wow. This man and his films have been featured in Sundance, the Berlin Film Festival, and in-demand pay-per-view. He's done for the sport of MMA what NFL Films has done for the sport of football, a film company that has been recognized by the Pro Football Hall of Fame for its contributions. Please take a look at some of this footage, and then you can all hit me up on Twitter and Facebook to tell me how talented this dude really is. Roll that clip! Jiu-Jitsu! 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 The power of the Jiu-Jitsu! Pull back that time from the menace. Who does the amateur Okay, fight fans, back to the topic of the day. I've been teasing you all for a few weeks now, and without further ado, I take you into the world of a company who began as a clothing brand before branching off into magazines and television. If you haven't figured it out yet, it's officially time to get your head checked. We're talking Tap Out! First off, let's talk about the man that started it all and left this world long before it was his time to go. Charles Mass Lewis never got the chance to fully see his dream come alive after a tragic accident took his life in 2009. But thanks to his partners, remains a lasting legacy. Mass started out as a businessman, promoter, and entertainer. He founded the Tap Out clothing line back in 1997. Fast forward a few years and many painstaking hours of blood, sweat, and tears, the company is now a multi-million dollar entity and the leader in MMA clothing sales. Not even 10 years later in 2007, the company had revenued over 22.5 million. Wow, not bad, huh? That same year, Mask and his partner started in a reality TV show titled after the company. The three amigos followed the up-and-comers in the sport of MMA and helped them train for their fights. Episodes would end with the boys watching their fighters in a cage or ring that night. Just a mirror for the sun. Just a mirror for the sun. The group was riding high and life was as good as it can be until that one fateful night on March 11, 2009.
Just before 1 in the morning, a drunk driver sideswiped Mask off the road, causing his vehicle to slide into a light post, ejecting his friend Lacey Lynn on impact. Mask's vehicle split in half, killing him on the scene. In most things we do, the biggest battle comes from within. Every underdog has a champion inside. It just takes focus, it just takes time. I mean, no one believed I could fly until I did it. Not only did we lose the founder of Tapo, but we also lost one of the biggest ambassadors for the sport of MMA. I can't help but think if it wasn't for him and his crew, where would the sport be? For the Sucker Punch crew and us fight fans around the globe, I see you are gone but will never be forgotten for what you have achieved, Charles Lewis Jr. Rest in peace and thank you for everything you've done. Now let's talk about one of the other badass members of Tapo. This mofo stands over six feet tall and is not so ironically known to everybody as Skyscrape. This man's real name is Tim Katz, and he, alongside with Mask, is one of the three that founded Tapo. In addition to that, he is also a producer known for his work on Warrior and the feature film Lockdown. Now that's sick, folks. Last but certainly not least is the man known to millions as Punk Ass, Mr. Dan Caldwell himself, also known as the third and final founding member of Tapo. Punk Ass has achieved in many aspects of the professional world, from producing to acting. He's been involved with such films as The Hammer and the history of MMA. Like his co-founders, Punk Ass's true gift to the fighting world is that he gives chances back to people in need of a shot. I can speak on my own behalf and tell you that this man has given me a new outlook on life and fighting. Now you know a little about the humble beginnings of the Tapo Boys and the company they made famous. The trio collectively put together a thousand bucks which was all they had to get this company off the ground. Dreams are always attainable. Don't ever give up on them. Enjoy the ride and make some memories because we only have one chance to leave our mark in life. All right, folks, that's just about all I have left in me for today. But before I go, as always, I leave you with a treat. We here at Sucker Punch are kicking off our new look under a new banner. The crew and I would like to thank and welcome James Gazzi and Max Impact Academy for the newfound support. So with that in mind, it's time for the Max Impact KO of the Week. It took Anthony Rumble Johnson only 44 seconds to potentially end a very long and very successful career of Big Nog. Welcome back to the UFC, Rumble. Welcome back. This has been a very special first episode of MMA Soccer Punch, and I'm your host, The Punching Bag, reminding you that life always dishes out some blows. So always, always keep those hands up! Sucker Punch is probably brought to you in part by Max Impact Academy. The Tap Out Crew, Bobby Razik, and D-Box TV.